Hi and welcome back to another episode. This is episode 5 and as promised we're going to be connecting up the uh, two switches in my network cabinet. So here we have the USW aggregation switch. Then of course the patch panel as you know which I've mentioned before above it. Then I have a USW Pro 24 port PoE switch above the patch panel here. And then of course it's the UDM Pro. So what I'm going to be doing is connecting up the switches into the UDM Pro and vice versa. So at the moment I'm just using the UDM Pro for the uh, connections that I need which are essential for me having to do work and so on but now I'm in a position to connect up all of the uh, sockets and all of the switches together with the UDM Pro apparently um, people in the IT world don't recommend daisy chaining things together um, by that I mean for example UDM Pro into one switch and then one switch into another switch. So what we're going to be doing is connecting the aggregation switch into one switch on one of the aggregation ports and then the UDM Pro into another port on the aggregation switch so that they're actually not daisy chains but actually have their own separate connection. So for that I've got a 0.5 meter ubiquity UACC DAC SPF10 0.5 meters of DAC cable and for the remaining ones I'm not going to be using DAC cables I'm going to be using SFP plus modules and I have four of these at the moment and for reference they are UACC CM RJ 4510G and gosh these are expensive these SFP modules um, they work out to be about 70 pounds sterling in our British currency each However, um, I decided I wanted to use SFP Plus modules to try and make the uh, cabinet a bit tidier because I only seem to be able to find the shortest DAC cables at 0.5 metres is what I've got here. And of course you've got all the excess what you have to tie up and try and tidy up in your cabinet. So for the first one I'm going to be connecting up the DAC cable here from port 8 of the USW aggregation switch and that's going to be linked in to port 11 on the UDM Pro which is the most right side bottom port on the UDM Pro. So to remove the plastic cover I find it easier just to use a knife but be careful using the knife and just release the plastic cover and then the other end of the DAC cable is going in to the UDM Pro. So we've got the DAC cable from the USW aggregation switch into the UDM Pro. And this is a short cable. I'm going to try and push it to the side of the cabinet without damaging it if possible, just to make it look a bit tidier. Then I'm going to put in an SFP plus module into port 26 which is the last port on the USW Pro 24 port PoE switch. Actually no I have another DAC cable here however it's a one meter DAC cable but let's see how we get on. So the half meter cable can go from the aggregation switch into the PoE switch 
because the devices are a bit closer together and then for the longer cable because the UDM Pro is slightly further away to the aggregation switch than the PoE switches will connect the other DAC cable and that will go into port 11 on the UDM Pro and then we'll try and push the DAC cable down the side with the other one and then connect that to port 6 on the aggregation switch like so so to confirm in port 6 of the aggregation switch we have a 1 meter DAC cable and that's going up to port 11 on the UDM Pro the next thing is bedroom socket 1 needs to be removed from the UDM Pro and we'll remove that cable completely and bedroom socket 1 can be put in with a smaller as you'll see here length of custom made at 6 cable um, I actually had these made from a company called Cable Monkey um, because I like the quality of their cables so I decided to purchase some from from them I'll try and put a link in the description I can't actually remember how much they were anyway so for bedroom socket one that will be going into port three of the aggregation switch with an SFP module inserted into the aggregation switch port three and then click the lock let's try and get the cable the right way round does actually need to be twisted slightly that's locked in place and then that goes into socket B1 which is for the bedroom then for lounge 1, lounge 2 and lounge 3 and bedroom 2 and bedroom 3 these on the UDM Pro can all be removed like so that can go into port 1 of the switch just to make that look a bit tidier and for your information port 1 on the PoE switch goes to goes to the back of the cabinet and that goes into the back of my Synology DS220 Plus which is my backup NAS which I use for offline backups as I've mentioned before a few times so for patch panel connection W1 which you'll see here which is for the wireless access point that will be going up to port 2 on the PoE switch actually this cable for the uh, backup NAS seems a bit tight so I'm going to uh, remove it and put a slightly longer cable in so the cable from the Synology NAS that is actually up there and this is the Synology DS1621 Plus NAS um, I actually upgraded the network card in it added a 10 gigabit network card so that it can support bigger file transfer read and writes so here is the cable for that which I've routed from the back of the Synology NAS and it's fed down the back of the cabinet and just underneath the aggregation switch so here I'll just release the plastic cover gently and that will be connected to port 1 on the aggregation switch with again an SFP plus module which I'm inserting now into port number 1 of the aggregation switch lock that in place and then that will connect that up for 10 gigabit this doesn't look too bad at the moment actually for tidiness I have to say thankfully so we'll carry on now 
I'll leave the camera one and camera two ports disconnected at the moment because there's nothing connected on the end of the cables. Um, so I'll continue on and connect up from the patch panel lounge socket one, two, three and four and then the remaining bedroom sockets two, three and four. If you recall bedroom socket one is going into the aggregation switch because it's a 10 gigabit connection and I also have a 10 gigabit ethernet card in my uh, PC hence why I'm connecting it to the aggregation switch so down to socket one we'll connect that into port so we can go into port number 12 of the PoE switch just to keep the cables as vertical as possible and make them look as neat as possible Lounge 2 can go into port 14 Lounge 3 can go into port 16 and then Lounge 4 can go into port 18 that might look better if it's actually gone into one of those ports there just to make that cable so it's not clashing sort of thing that looks a bit neater two going to port 20 bedroom port 3 from the patch panel we're going to port 22 of the PoE switch and then the final one bedroom 4 we'll go into port 24 of the PoE switch but that doesn't look too bad actually I must say and then port number four which is the second bottom one along on the aggregation switch can be used for the UNVR when I get that connected up so what I'm going to do now is make a note on paper of which device is connected to which port whilst I'm making a note of all the port numbers and where they go on a piece of paper just for reference might as well plug in the two switches and let them power themselves on but at the same time I'm going to be doing a factory reset on them as you will see from their screens here they're just resetting themselves so I think the actual, sorry, the aggregation switch has actually reset itself. So let's, let's finish starting up. So let's click the reset button in 10 seconds and hope that it's saying factory reset at the moment. Yeah, here we go. It's factory resetting itself. And now that the uh, POE switch has finished starting, I'm going to factory reset that as well. So I'm holding in the reset button with the fine pin head and just waiting for that to reset itself as well. So I'm just going to make a note of each port and what it's connected to and I'll be right back soon. So now that I've connected all the cables up from the patch panel into the PoE switch and also into for those that need it the 10 gig connections have been connected up to the aggregation switch and of course we have the two DAC cables coming from the aggregation switch one of those goes into the PoE switch and then the other one goes further up into the UDM Pro so at the moment all the network ports, ports 1 through to 8 anyway, on the UDM Pro have no devices in them apart from port 9 which goes into the Virgin Media Hub 3 which is, has been put in modem mode as you'll see in my previous video and then port 11 has been connected up by the DAC cable which goes as I just said into the aggregation switch we'll go over to my computer screen and check the settings for the switches and if necessary set them up into the Unify Network Controller 
so now that we've connected all the devices up in the cabinet here we are and I've logged into my Unify OS as you'll see and I have a message in the top left corner saying ready to add three network devices three network devices detected on route 01 meaning my UDM Pro so I'll just click X on that to close that reminder and we'll go in to the network application and add in the two switches so to do that we need to go to the top right corner and click on the dotted square icon and then from the menu that drops down select network then you will be presented with your network dashboard as you will see here and then from the network dashboard you'll need to select unify devices from the left hand side menu option and that's the third icon down and it's in the shape of a well, for example a donut so click on that then you'll see that there are three devices waiting to be adopted the usw aggregation and also the usw pro 24 port poe switch and also there's the u6 pro um, I'm not going to be adopting the U6 Pro in this video uh, because I'm going to do a separate video on that but the reason why that's popped up is just because I've uh, connected it into the PoE switch so it's uh, powered itself on automatically. So first I'm going to click on USW aggregation and under the status I'm going to click to adopt. So click that and then it will pop up with a menu on the right hand side of the screen with an adopt device button so let's click adopt device and then it's saying adopting usw aggregation now you'll see the status is changing to getting ready and we'll just wait for the status of that to say online here we go so we'll close that pop-up menu at the right hand side now that it's been adopted and we'll go to click on usw pro 24 poe and then under the status we'll select again click to adopt then from the right hand side menu that appears again click adopt device then it will change to status adopting as you will see here and also under the status it changed just then to from adopting to getting ready so we'll just wait for this to change to the status of online again as we did with the aggregation switch now the status of that has changed to online so that's good and then from the right hand side menu We'll click the X button to close that window. As I said, the U6 Pro here, we will adopt that in another video, as I don't need that active at the moment. So, from the three devices we have online, you might want to select your UDM Pro. Mine has been labeled Root 01, R-O-U-T 01 and you might want to synchronize the LCD screens on each device so that they're all synchronized to the same. Now to do that you need to click on settings once you've selected root 01 or your UDM Pro from the list then from the right hand side pop-up menu you need to select settings then scroll down to where it says touch screen and here you can select the brightness of the front LCD screens. I'm going to set these to about 70% just to reduce the brightness a bit and then click apply changes. You'll also see that there's night mode ticked. What this does is turn off the LCD screen between the start time shown and the end time. For example start time here is 10 p.m. 
and the end time is 8 a.m. So what I'm going to do is change it to the end time going to be 7 a.m. and click apply changes. Then underneath that you'll also see that underneath that there's rack multi-screen synchronization. Now what this does is synchronize all of the LCD screen on each of your devices in your network rack or connected to your network for example the router the aggregation switch and the usw pro will all have their brightness and night mode times synchronized to all of those devices if that option is ticked so that's it for those options so you can then proceed to click x on the pop-up menu at the right hand side here and then we will go to the USW aggregation select that one and then from the pop-up menu at the right hand side we're going to rename it so we'll click on settings and then under the name I will call it SWIT02 as in switch number two and then scroll down and change the end time for the night mode to 7 a.m. and click apply changes then it says setting changes have been applied so click X on the pop-up menu then for the USW Pro 24 PoE click that one and then under the settings option from the pop-up menu we will change the name to SWIT01 meaning switch number one and then scroll down to the end time and change that to 7 a.m. and click apply changes now it's saying the status getting ready so we'll just wait to that for that to change to online as it has done now and you'll see that the name has changed to SWIT02, SWIT01 and ROOT01. So click X on the pop-up menu at the right hand side and then from the left hand side menu click the cog or the gear icon which is for settings as you'll see here and then we'll just go through some of the options to make sure that everything is still in place and set as it was previously and multicast dns is enabled igmp snooping enabled that all looks okay in there so let's click on internet that looks okay in there then under profiles everything looks okay in there so we haven't changed anything in there and then on the system ah oh, one thing I have noticed is although we've set the time format to 24 hours previously the devices let me go back and show you what I mean for example click on route 01 or your UDM Pro click on settings that pops up in the menu then I've noticed that the start and end times are set as AM and PM even though we've actually changed the time under the system settings to be based on a 24 hour clock so I guess that's probably going to be uh, fixed in a future network application or firmware update whichever that applies to so let's go back to settings and click system and then under updates for device firmware we'll click check for updates just to see if there's any updates to for example the two switches that we've added so once you've clicked check for updates under device firmware you can then go to the left hand side menu icon and select the donut icon which is for Unify devices then you will be presented with a list of Unify devices and for the update status you'll see that all of those devices are already up to date 
so that's fine we don't need to do any updates so that completes adding the switches into the network hope you enjoyed this video keep a lookout for further videos i think in the next one we'll be configuring the wireless network so we'll be adopting the u6 pro and setting up the various wireless networks thanks for watching take care bye for now